In the year 1212 since the birth of Christ, Friedrich, the only son of Heinrich Stauffer, to his father's glorious throne arose. By providence chosen, though only 16 years old, clever and strong, he was a king most bold. Challenges were plentiful, but his judgments full of wisdom. Soon many a vassal, duke, or lord swore fealty to his kingdom. Monarch Roger, a patron to the erudite and all the wise men, every scholar, no matter their faith, was welcomed to his realm. His deeds were glorious, his subjects loved him more and more, his dominion prospered like never before. Soon the rumors were spread from the east to the west about Roger, the ruler of Christians, by God himself blessed. This praise reached Pope Gregory, but he froze, irked by hearing of another man as one God chose. Gregory's envy would lead to consequences most dire. No living soul could save Friedrich from his ire. With excommunication being his only other fate, Roger rode to Palestine on a crusade to save his state. Even with his most trusted knights, a dangerous proposition. Journey long, perilous and exhausting, a truly risky mission. Many a good man dead due to illness or fatigue. That was the true terror of the Pope's intrigue. One day, a desert storm came, raged and refused to wane threatening to end both their lives and the campaign. It seemed that for the Emperor's army all hope was lost. Centuries were ordered to find shelter, no matter the cost. At the last moment, the group scouts spotted a cave. Though ominous and sinister, they must choose to be brave. Roger's men entered the grotto with uneasy feel, making camp in surroundings that were most unreal. Days went by, the storm unwavering, no sign it would clear. Friedrich and his chosen explored their shelter without fear. Delving deeper into their shelter, anything but small. Dark passages lined by pillars receded to a large hall. Friedrich and his company were men loyal and seasoned, but in their hearts was dread which could not be reasoned. Architecture meant not for living men, vast and bold, perhaps chiseled by some mysterious giants of old. Distracted from his reverie by a glimmer of light, Roger saw a part of metal buried in the sand upright. A machine, a gate, centuries old, with it he must return. What trove of lost knowledge from it could he learn? Friedrich, albeit short on time, researched that device. Its power to grant wisdom should more than suffice. Gate to the Temple of Wisdom, the device was now called. It would lead to understanding of deep truths unequaled. In much higher spirits, knights loaded the gate on the caravan. And once again their journey, their crusade has began. The dread lifted, resolve firmer than ever before no longer fearful of what for them lay in store. No more was the journey punishment meant by the Pope. Now their quest was meaningful, their hearts full of hope. In the end, Roger gained control of Jerusalem without blood spilt, opened the Holy Land to pilgrims again, 
defensive walls rebuilt. City's crown rested on Emperor's noble head. With wise Sultan al Kamil, he shared his bread. People sang only praise for their emperor once again. With glory and magnificence, he continued his reign. Through the gate to the Temple of Wisdom, Friedrich often went. To learn its secrets, to further knowledge was his lustrous intent. He worked closely with those most loyal, those he chose. Thus, a new order of Knights Noble, Order of Justice, arose. Emperor Friedrich, always at their point, titled Grand Master, felt he did enough to sate Pope's anger, averted disaster. But to Gregory's ears were whispered rumors terrible, stories about a deal with the devil and lies unbearable, about how Roger's order was built to conceal a devil's gift, and since the Pope believed it, it caused an irreparable rift. Not long before the Emperor was excommunicated, by all the people of faith, he was to be isolated. Residents of Jerusalem who just a year ago called him their savior, now cast him out, the Pope to blame for this behavior. The Emperor by this iniquity was a back taken. All the Pope's intrigues left him quite shaken. When he finally retreated to Italy and his throne, he lived for his order of justice and his land alone. Roger guarded the secrets of the order for his enemies would not cease, wanted the gate more than secure, no longer believing in peace. A plan born both from his genial mind and godly inspiration. To build a fortress for the order, to be held in awe by the whole nation. To the castle's construction, he devoted his life. Eight massive walls to survive any strife. Eight watchtowers with windows peering over the countryside eternally guarded by eight men most loyal and eagle-eyed. Eight sides to the courtyard for the men to meet and rest. In the middle of it all, an eight-sided podium protected best. On this podium, the gate to the Temple of Wisdom was erected. By all the knights, not to be worshipped, but to be respected. So it was created, for both the lost and the wise it did shine. Templum Justitia, the Temple of Justice, the Castle, the shrine. It was quarters of the order by the wise Placentinus foretold. Inside were troves of wisdom and power, more precious than gold. Even for the wise and powerful flies the time. Men became old, children rose to their prime. After the death of Raga, Grand Master first, Others came, best of the order, in wisdom versed. One after another silent, hidden, but each of virtue measure. The gate to the temple of wisdom, always their treasure. Generation after generation, the secret was keeping. Wealth and wisdom gaining, never relenting, never sleeping. 
But the year 1465 after Christ came, and for the order of justice, the world was never the same. There he is! Look up! In the window, across the room! 